Ten million years ago, we took our first uncertain steps on two legs. From simple tools to global empires, from fire to artificial intelligence, our story has never stood still. We are the product of evolution, yes, but evolution doesn't stop. Not with us, not now. What comes next? Will we still be human or something entirely new? Over the next few minutes, we'll race forward through time and glimpse a future shaped by biology, technology, and everything in between. This is not science fiction. This is evolution. Fast forwarded. Every species has a beginning. Ours starts over two million years ago. Not with dominance, but with desperation. Homo habilis, small and vulnerable, chips away at stone to make tools. It's the first sign. Nature is no longer in full control. Intelligence is taking over. Then comes Homo erectus, taller, tougher, a pioneer. This is the first human to master fire, to leave Africa, to imagine a world beyond the horizon. Fire wasn't just warmth, it was chemistry, community, protection. It let us cook food, fuel bigger brains, and stay awake into the night, telling stories. Time accelerates. Homo sapiens arrive. Not the strongest, not the fastest, but something new. Minds that can remember, plan, and dream. We invent language, the code that lets thoughts move from one skull to another. With it comes cooperation, belief systems, shared goals. We shape tools, then tools shape us. Agriculture reshapes our diet, our bodies, our settlements. Cities give rise to laws, religion, war, and writing, the external hard drive for human memory. Step by step, our biology bends to culture, and culture bends biology right back. We look in the mirror and think, this is the final version. But that's an illusion. Evolution hasn't stopped. It's just changed pace and direction. The truth is unsettling. We are still becoming. We are always becoming. We like to think evolution is something from the past, something slow, ancient, and finished. But it never stopped. In fact, it may be accelerating, not through natural disasters or ice ages, but through something stranger, everyday life. Our brains are already adapting to the digital world. Studies suggest that short-term memory is weakening, not because we're getting dumber, but because we've outsourced remembering. Phones, clouds, calendars, external minds. In response, our visual systems are sharpening. We navigate information through symbols, interfaces, rapid flashes of images. Evolution is watching and adjusting. Our immune systems, too, are shifting. In sanitized cities, far from the microbes we evolved with, our bodies are confused. Allergies are rising. Autoimmune disorders, the body attacking itself, are no longer rare but common. In a strange twist, survival now means adapting to an environment we built ourselves. Even reproduction is evolving, culturally and biologically. Who chooses to have children and who doesn't is no longer just personal. It's selective pressure. Traits that used to matter for survival, strength, fertility, even aggression, are being replaced by entirely new metrics, emotional intelligence, adaptability, even the ability to go viral. The digital world isn't just changing how we live, it's changing who we are. 
Algorithms shape attention. Screens shape posture. Information shapes behavior. This isn't just a technological revolution. It's an evolutionary one. We are mutating, just not in ways we can see. Yet, 10,000 years into the future, a blink on the evolutionary scale, but enough to rewrite the blueprint of life. Imagine a world where genetic editing is as routine as vaccination. We no longer wait for evolution to act. We edit the code directly. Want your child to have green eyes? Done. A stronger immune system. Enhanced memory. Reduced risk of depression. All programmable. Natural selection becomes optional. And nature itself. Negotiable. But biology alone won't define us. We'll replace failing organs with lab-grown alternatives, custom-built from our own DNA. Limbs enhanced with synthetic muscles, eyes that see in the dark, hearts that never falter. The line between healing and upgrading will blur, then disappear. Some will go further. Neural interfaces, direct links between mind and machine, will create a new kind of cognition. Not just faster thinking, but distributed thinking. You won't search the internet. You'll remember it. Your thoughts may not even be entirely your own. And then there's space. Earth is a cradle, but we're outgrowing it. To survive on Mars, Europa, or artificial habitats, our bodies will need reprogramming, lower gravity, radiation, limited oxygen. We'll adapt, maybe not in one generation, but in ten, easily. At some point, we'll have to ask, if we design ourselves completely, genes, minds, metabolism, are we still human, or something we haven't named yet? A million years from now, what will human even mean? The word may still exist, but we may not recognize the thing it describes. Evolution doesn't guarantee unity. It diversifies. Over time, we may split into branches, not by geography, but by design. Engineered elites with optimized bodies, cast-like bioforms, each tailored for a specific role. Cyborg lineages, born part organic, part machine, and purely synthetic beings. Consciousness uploaded, replicated, reborn. Some will choose to remain flesh. Others will abandon it entirely. Minds uploaded into digital space may become nearly immortal, not because we conquered death, but because we debugged it. Consciousness could loop endlessly, updating like software, evolving without bodies at all. But what if this isn't the end point? Just another transition? Perhaps Homo sapiens are no more final than Homo erectus was. Just one brief chapter in a much longer book. To future beings, we may seem quaint, primitive, temporary, as distant as trilobites or dreams. The question is no longer whether we will evolve. The question is whether we will recognize ourselves when we do. Ten million years. Enough time for mountains to rise and vanish, for continents to drift, for species to come and go, unnoticed by time. What will become of us? Will anything of us remain? Perhaps we'll vanish, not in catastrophe, but in transformation replaced by minds we designed but could never fully understand. Not our descendants in blood, but in logic, in code, in intent. Or perhaps we'll persist, not as bodies, but as pattern, consciousness encoded, duplicated, stretched across machines, stars, Dimensions, eternal, but frozen, alive.
but no longer evolving. A species in suspension, timeless, changeless, unrecognizably perfect. And maybe that's the paradox, to evolve beyond evolution itself, to become the last step and the last mistake. But evolution is not a ladder. It has no top, no plan, only movement. Ten million years from now, something will be here. Thinking, building, changing, something with roots in our DNA, or just in our ambition. Ten million years from now, it will no longer be us, but they will be our children.